Uh, hi, good morning. Morning. I am the founder and the CEO of Heroes of Hope joining me today. Holy Murphy. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. And I am Shubhika Kalra. I'm the co-founder of Wings of Angels. Wings of Angels is a CDA recognized social initiative. The aims to make Dubai and then the whole world be Jeff Nenley. Jeff currently built over a thousand million apps in Dubai as of now. And we do this by first finding out about the places that don't have wheelchair access. Then we convince them places to become wheelchair accessible. Until they don't miss support them and also that they can become wheelchair accessible. Hi, Holly. I would like to know a little bit more about your Heroes of Hope. How did it start and what is it all about? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it was lovely to meet you and to talk with you today. So Heroes of Hope, how did it all start? Wow. Um, so I am a, a teacher. So by trade, I was um, a PE teacher for a long, long time. And I've always believed that um, sport is a very powerful vessel to bring people together and it creates a platform where people can work towards the common goal and we can celebrate people's achievements and instill self-confidence and self-belief. And that was something I was practicing a lot for mainstream children. And that was a lot of fun. However, um, I've always enjoyed working with people of determination. So even when I was training to become a teacher, uh, part of my training was to work with people with um, additional needs. So when I moved to the UAE about 11 years ago, it became very apparent that there wasn't really a lot of opportunity for people um, of determination to participate in um, activities such as sport. So I took it upon myself really to kind of start volunteering my time um, at some of the centers here in the UAE. Um, and then really from there I decided that, the, that really the centers were not really equipped to um, deliver the level of sport that I would like to do with the kids. Um, so rather than me going to them, I decided to invite them to come to my school because my school had obviously all the facilities you could dream of. You know, and it means I could obviously deliver um, proper sports, real sports, and, you know, really get the kids, um, kids progressing and, you know, working together. So what well, kind of started off an initiative that only had about 12 people of determination after doing it for almost four or five years it started to we've now got a community of over 150 children involved and adults of determination so there's a real big demand um, for this style of training and community so that's a big thing what here's a hope is about is we are a community and we like to model ourselves as like an outreach community we're, we're trying to reach out to as many people of determination as possible um, we don't discriminate, so it doesn't matter what ability, what age, we don't, what nationality, you know, you're always welcome um, at Heroes of Hope. Um, and we try to give our athletes and our families the same opportunities, if not more, if not more, um, as would anybody else get when it comes to, you know, signing up to, to play sports or be part of a fitness community. So we offer out... Um, a variety of programs from specific styles of sports like specialist sports like basketball gymnastics athletics but we also do lots of um, fitness activities as well so you know we go to numerous gyms out here so we were attached to um, a crossfit gym called sans so we do a little bit of a um, mixed crossfit sessions for people of determination and then we're also linked in with gymnasting um yeah, so we really are trying to open up the doors for people of determination to have the opportunity not just to practice a specialist sport, but also to engage in active, healthy living. So, you know, if they don't like sport, that's okay. We have other options for them to, to get involved with. So, yeah, so that's what we kind of do at Here's a Hope. We really are trying to give them um, a lifestyle which they enjoy, a community where they've got lots of friends, where they're supported and they're loved. Um, we really see ourselves as one big family, 
being honest. Um, we know we're kind of all brothers and sisters and aunties and uncles. That's kind of where we are now at this point. We see the kids every day. We work really hard for them. Um, all the coaches, they actually volunteer their time. So we are a not-for-profit organization. So all the coaches that um, affiliate with us, they, they do volunteer a lot of their time to work with the kids and adults um, with these needs. Um, so as a result of seeing them like every single day and, and whatnot, we have just become a massive family. So, yeah, that's what we do at Heroes of Hope. And I would like to ask you, uh, if you won dollar five thousand, you know, Heroes of Hope, you could use it for Heroes of Hope. How would you use the money? I would use it. It's two things I would do. Okay, one is we really want to build like a community center. So... I could open my doors all day, every day for people of determination to come whenever they pleased, whether that was to play sports or to go to a gym or just to hang out and just, you know, play with us, you know, like play board games or whatever. So kind of build like a little community hub where we've got all the people of determination come to every day where we have lots of fun. It's not so regimental, not like school, like a community hub. That's really, really fun. And the second thing I would do is I would take all my heroes on a holiday. Wow. And we go on a holiday together and we just have lots of fun and we can go like to the beach. We can go fishing, you know, we can go and do water sports. We can, you know, go hang out and just have a really nice time. Awesome. So either my community center or we're going on holiday. Nice. I really like the idea. And I will really why can you tell me about your like some of the current challenges you face with the heroes of hope? Um, every day there's challenges at Heroes of Hope, but that's where we have become very good at finding solutions. Um, I think obviously in previous years it was always very hard because of mindset, people's um perspective of people of determination was very much so focused on they can't do that or, you know, they're worried about their behavior. And, you know, so often it was very hard to kind of get a facility to support us or, you know, an organization to get behind what we did. So we really have worked exceptionally hard over the years to remove that stigma and to show off exactly what our heroes can do and to show them that they're very capable once they're given that opportunity and the right support. Um, so now, obviously, we're now getting access to a lot more facilities and people really are starting to understand, you know, that um, what our organization is all about. So, you know, that initially that was very, very hard kind of getting a facility, even getting coaches. Um, sometimes a coach is like, I've never really worked with someone of determination. I don't really know what I'm doing. And I'm like, but it's like everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, what is going on here? So. Again, it's kind of breaking down that mold of just because they have additional needs, you know, it doesn't mean you can't still show up and be there. You know what I mean? Like not being bad but when a family has a child with special needs, they don't know they don't have they're gonna have a child with special needs, and they also have to adapt or have to change things. And and here's the hope is exactly what us as coaches have to do. We have to adapt and we have to change and rethink how we structure things. Um, and having that level of open-mindedness, I think. So it's not necessarily like that's another big thing initially was trying to get the volunteers involved. Was like, look, just come there, be there for them, develop that relationship, you know, build a bond with them. And that I'm telling you, by doing that, it's going to change everything. Um, obviously, as well, like financial support, because we always want to get uniforms for the children. We want to, like, Santa Claus is coming this Saturday and we want to buy them some presents, you know, from Santa Claus to, to give to the children. And there's little things like that. It's always a popping up, like, um, and we're big advocates for bringing our or entering our children and our athletes into different events at the weekends. So for example, next weekend I'm taking over 12 athletes of determination um, to join the Garmin quest challenge. It's an adventure challenge. So they will be cycling 13 kilometers through the mountains. They will then have to hike five kilometers and then they have to kayak one kilometer. And it's the first time ever people of determination in this country have ever done this style of event. But again, there's different expenses behind, you know, preparing those athletes and getting them ready for this type of event. Because for some of them, they've never even cycled before. So we've had to obviously get bikes. We've had to make sure they have, you know, the uniform ready, helmets and just different things like that. So I think definitely a financial thing because we do operate as a not-for-profit. So anything we do get, we do try and use that money then to roll out 
through different programs in different ways. Um, for some of them, we've had to buy like specific styles of equipment so that we can ensure that, you know, the kids are getting the best out of our program. So sometimes we have to, you know, try and order equipment, obviously, from different areas, or we have to really go out there and find the, the right style of equipment for the kids. So all those kind of little things can be a little bit tricky when you don't have the right money behind it. You know, you're always thinking, all right, how are we going to do that? Um, so definitely finances can be hard because people still don't really understand how we operate. Um, but we are a not-for-profit and everything we try to do, we do try to put back into the programs that we deliver and, and ensure that the kids um, are learning and progressing the right way. And what are your future plans for Heroes of Hope? To go around the world and help as many people of determination, not just here in the UAE, but across the country, uh, across the whole world. Because um, at the end of the day, like people with additional needs are not just here in the UAE, they are absolutely everywhere, you know? Yes. Like, where I don't know where it all came from, this whole stigma. It's like normal and not normal i don't know where that all came from at the end of the day every single person in this world is not the same no two people are the same so why do we operate like they, they're like people of determination are one style of uh, one group of people and we're another group of people that that is not real that is not yeah. how this world is actually working and people with special needs has existed forever you know it's been right there forever you know it's always been there it's not something new and unfortunately, there's a lot of people, not just here in the UAE, but on global perspective, that do need support and do need um, organizations like Heroes of Hope that can educate the community, that can bring communities together, that can celebrate diversity and individuality. And yes, they may have special needs, but they also have very special hearts and they're very special people. And for me, they are the best people in the whole wild world. I'd rather be with them than anyone else. So once you kind of celebrate um, how amazing these people are uh, and you can show off to the world how great they are, I think the whole world then might start changing and we become a much more inclusive world. Thank you so much, Holly, for speaking to me. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was lovely to meet you.